Hey guys, so we're here at the Aurora Resort in Aquila, and we're about to take a tour of the farms here with Brian Corbett, the director of Landscape. Um, and uh, we're so excited, so let's go. Welcome to um, Aurora Resort Thank you. in Angola, and um, we're happy to have you here. And right now, we're going to take a tour of the hydroponic farm. And one may ask yourself, what is hydroponic? Hydroponic is food created by water. So you don't have any soil involved. You just been um, fed through water, all the minerals that you would get from the soil. And we are very happy here at Aurora to um, display what we do at the hydroponic farm. And also to have you taste what we do there as well in our six restaurants that we have on property and with the seventh restaurant which is the cafeteria we make sure all of our guests all of our workers taste a bit of everything that we do in the hydroponic and not only in the hydroponic outside of the hydroponic because we do have areas outside of the hydroponic where we turn to the soil as well so you won't be saying that you're getting stuff straight from the hydroponic but from our gardens as well where we have areas that we have some herbs, we have some key limes, we have some sour sap, we have some sweet potatoes, and the different fruits that you would get inside of your room as a welcome amenity and so forth. So um, please free to join me at the hydroponic farm at Aurora Anguilla. Let's go. So some of the things that we have here, we have cocoa plums and it's something native to the island, uh, cocoa plums. And these are the trees. So if you find, you're walking through the property in the garden and you find some of these trees and they will bear a special fruit on them. And shortly I will show you some of the fruit and you will get to taste some of it as well. Okay, closely. Look closely. These are cocoa plums. Okay, when they're this, they're ripe. One for you, one for you. Let me get some more. Basically, you eat the sap around it and then you just take out the seed, you know? And if you notice, it has a, like a, a sweeter taste when you meet the, the white sap. You know, when it gets darker, it even gets sweeter. You know, and these these are very um, nutrition fruits that we have on the island, and also you'll find them throughout the Caribbean islands as well. Over on this side, we have the basil, and we have the different basil, and also we have rosemary as well. The basil's you can use for tea, you can use for uh, making uh, pizza, and so forth. So uh, different varieties you can use basil's for. It's good when you sit down on the porch and read in a book. You can just drink a, a very nice basil tea. It's very smoothing. Over on this side, we have the onion tribes or the scallions. You know, and you know the scallions used for our seasoning. So that is something good too as well. You can use it on fish. You can use it on meat. You could use it on chicken. You could use it even on steak. Normally, sometimes you can steam it with some vegetables and it's good to eat as well. Um, here you have the lemongrass. The lemongrass is something very, very um, um, new to some people, but it's not new to the Caribbean because normally right now you'll find they make lemongrass drink from it as well. And you can cook it with rice as well. And you can use the seasoning um, with it too as well. The part that you use mostly for the seasoning is the root base when you pluck it out the white surface the softer surface you can use it and cut it up similar how you cut up the scallions then the leaf section that you mostly use for tea you boil some water you wash out the leaf you fold it you dip it in it and you wait until it draws but other than that you can cook it in rice as well you can get that lemony rice taste by when you're boiling your rice you just put the leaf in it and let it draw away with the rice cooking as well. 
and it gives a lovely flavor. With the rosemary, rosemary, we all know, rosemary is a seasoning um, um, plant, but also is a, a tea plant as well. You can use it for tea as well, and it's very, very, very healthy. You know, especially um, the toxins and so forth in your body. It helps take out those toxins. We have other plants that would take out toxins, which I will show you on our trip. Here we have the passion fruit. And you would have the passion fruit drink. You would have the passion fruit sorbet. And once you see, we provide you with those. All of these came from this area here. This is the passion fruit vines. And right now, they're just coming back in. They were out, you know, so they we we um juvenile and they showing their blossoms. Shortly you'll see their blossoms come out. And you may find one or two on on the tree so far. Trying to see if I can pick up one. Okay, here we go. So and the good thing about passion fruit. The good thing about passion fruit, this view. The good thing about passion fruit, you can eat it just like that. You could just squeeze it, open it up, and just you suck the sap from the seeds, and it's very sweet. Mr. Brooks, do you have any other passion fruit? Um, yeah. Already. Okay, this is another one. One more. Right. Perfect. This oh, is for you. Thank you so much. And these are very, 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 very uh, delicious fruits. You know, when you open them up, you can just, just up, take a spoon and you scoop it up all. Do like my friend here. Just take it all out and just open up, open up the sack and you just suck it and tell us how sweet it is mm. very sweet a little okay. bit um after after, after you taste a tiny bit toy, but yeah mm -hmm. really sweet yeah once you you um you take it from the sap because the sap is the protection area of it you would find if you taste the sap you would have more like a bitter taste but the seeds itself with the gel on it is very very sweet Just like if I ordered like a passion fruit. A passion fruit sorbet or passion fruit drink. Exactly. So actually it gets the same. The, the thing is, there's no different when you're making the drink or the sorbet. It's the identical taste you get from the fruit itself. The fruit is that strong that it gives off that flavor, no matter if you add water to it. So above us here, we have our date palms. And you know, you go in the shop and buy some dates. So we have our dates mostly by August time. As you look straight between, you see those dates on there? By August, they're gonna be ripe and they're gonna try and you know, fall to the ground before the birds catch them. You know, sometimes we try and pick them and just put them away so they could ripe so we can use them as well. Here, we have the dragon fruit. Dragon fruit plant. This is the dragon fruit plant here. And if you notice, we put the barcodes here. So in case you're walking alone and you want to know more about the plant itself and the health benefits of the plant, you take your phone, you scan the barcode, and it give you all the information you need to know. So you're going to find some areas with the, the names and the barcode. And if no one is around to tell you about them, you can take your phone and scan the barcode and it will give you all of the information you need about it. Over on this side, we have our finger bananas, or better known as our thumb bananas. And these, 
are very, very sweet bananas when ripen. And as you can see, you know, in some countries, the heart of the banana is used. They saute these and eat as well. So it's like with the skin and these that fall, normally you'll find they come, they pick them, cut them up nicely, add some seasoning to it, you know, and saute them. And this is a nice delicacy in some islands as well. So over on this side, where we have our fruit trees, our lemon um, trees, our salsa trees, guava, mango, sugar apples, sapodilla, you know, and we're going to go through most of them. And our key kiwi line, over on this side, we have the sea grapes. And the sea grapes, you could have them in different formation. You could have them as a hedge or you could have them as a a tree on on the side of the the ocean we have the sea grapes as a hedge normally they take a lot of salt they can take a lot of salt and since the island is flat it takes a lot of salt brine so what we do we put plants in place that can protect other plants that cannot take that salt brine the bear the bear fruit they call them grapes when they ripen they're very sweet and also you can make a drink with them you can make a wine with them also. Here you have the pomegranate. Pomegranate. Right now they are not ripe on us yet, they're just small. And here we have the fig tree. Figs. So we have some figs coming along. See, we have some miniature figs, they are not ripe as yet. See, we have some there. And then we have the breadfruit. This is our breadfruit tree. This is our breadfruit tree here. This, we had some ripe ones we sent to the kitchen. And these are delicacies. You could have roast breadfruit, or you could have boiled breadfruit. And when you boil it, or if you leave it on the tree to ripen some more and you boil it, you can make um, salad out of it. Just as how you make potato salad, you can make breadfruit salad. You can make a drink out of it, breadfruit drink as well. It's a thick, creamy drink, very, very rich in nutrients. And also with the salad, the salad is, oh, very nice. You can have it boiled and cooked in soup with a nice chicken broth, you know, you can have, or a nice meat soup you can cook it with as so. And as you can see, we're filled with guavas. They're not ripe as yet, but they're getting there. So these are our guavas. And once they're ripe, we pick them and we send to the rooms as amenities, you know, with our food platters and so forth. And then over here, we have our sapotilla. This is our sapodilla and it's a fruit similar to kiwi. Um, when ripe, it's very sweet. Other than the kiwis have that sour taste. These are very sweet, but inside is brown and it has one seed. Other than the kiwi have multiple seeds. This have one seed in the middle and it's sapodilla. So more sapodilla, guava. Here, we have our star fruit. That's another tasty fruit as well. Very sweet. So the star fruit, you can wash it and you can eat. Ah, uh, it's all right. But it's okay. It's rain have been falling. <laughs> so that wash it off. So, and how it tastes? Juicy, right? Yeah. Ah. Very juicy. Very juicy. 
So here, over this side now, we come through a close up here. That's not soft up yet. So all of these are south up. And remember I told you about we're gonna come to a plant that can take out oxygen oxygenated from your body and so forth if you have a flu or if a baby is sick and you can just get that bush rub it up put it in um like a piece of cloth put some rubs on it put it on the baby chest if the baby have a flu and then in the morning that plant leaf itself will turn dark black you know because it take all of the mucus like from the baby and so forth also you can use it to make a tea it's good for babies when they are crying a lot they put them asleep it's a sleeping agent you don't give them too much doubt um for adults is a very smoothing tea a relaxing tea you know but these the fruit itself have a lot of health benefits the um the heart of the fruit is good for men for more of a prostate and so forth um also good for ladies for more the mental cycle base but the fruit itself when ripe you can use it to make um drink you can use it to make ice cream sorbets and so forth so this is our sour sap let's see what it sounds like well okay that's just laying there Woo! water see it's going there So we're going to enter one of our hydroponic areas that produce our lettuce and our herbs. I have one question. How does the hydroponic farm, uh, how is it sustainable to help out the island? Help out the island? If everyone goes hydroponic, basically it saves a lot because the food is cleaner. And based on agricultural use as in terms of the minerals, it's a cleaner process you know you're not over feeding the plant it's just the exact minerals the plant going to take out the same as how it takes out from the soil but the, the ozone layer been damaging and so forth you know sometimes you have to go do a cleaner process um you won't have any bacteria on it as in terms of um flies um rodents crawl on it and so forth so you more have a cleaner and healthier plant plus where it would take up to 64 days before the plant could really put out something. It takes less days for the plant to really um, bear. Mostly, you know, plants bear in the nighttime, right? In the daytime, it's survival mode. More in the evening, the cool time, that's where the growth rate of a plant really um, starts, as in terms of the fruit process and everything. So you're going to see some things in here that would surprise you. Right at this side, this is where we do our seedlings. And as you can see, those here are super heated rock wool that we do our seedlings in. And if you look at these name tags, it would tell you when it's seeded from. And then once it's seeded and it's come to maturity, it's transplanted on these terraform boards in these tubelets, right? Under these tubelets, we have um, water inside of the water you have the nutrients right so it's every 10 minutes you have water running through and this the roots of those plants would take the nutrients up and they would help them to grow as you could see we have different lettuce here we have our kale we have basil again and if you can look at the basil here Versus the ones outside, you will say these are more healthier than the ones outside. We have the, uh, the scallions versus the ones outside. They're going to be much bigger. Over on this side, you have the, your mint that makes your mojito. And here you have your garlic, scallions, you have your ginger. So basically you have different varieties. So as I said earlier, we're going out 
trying to do new things. So right now, these plants would last us for six months. And then what we do, we take out. So like the other section, we already taken out. So we're planting it new. So it's just new vines inside of it. They are not mature to a dam at those places yet. So right now, we will only have lettuce, kale, watercress, mint, basil, Golden frill, those are golden frill, good for salads and so forth. They're very minty. We have our temperature gauges here. Certain plants can take a lot of heat, certain plants cannot. But because of the fact that in the daytime it's very hot, in the nighttime it's cooler, that's why plant use the daytime for survival base, you know? And then in the evening time, that's where you have the growth rate, especially those that bear tomatoes and peppers, you may surprise in the morning how big the tomatoes is from the day before. Or the zucchini, how big the zucchini is from the day before. So, as you can see, they have different stages in the lettuce. You have from the baby stage, which you have come across here, that recently lay down and then they'll come to this stage and from this stage they'll come to this stage stage three you know and then they'll come to this stage a little bigger and then to the finishing product so tomorrow they'll come and they'll reap these for the um, restaurant They'll reach these for the restaurant, and then you'll know, basically when they reach those, that further set down below, that's going to be the next set that's going to come to replace those. So you always have something replaceable. In the Caribbean, mostly everything is inside it is native to Anguilla. The only difference is, is that the soil in Anguilla is more limestone and it has a lot of alkaline in it. So what we have, um, Anguillans have done to create more of a volcanic nature soil, you mix some areas with the topsoil and sand to create that volcanic um, nature loose soil and then you add um, fertilizer to it. So you have your sulfur granules, you have your iron um, granules, and you add that to the soil. Or you can make your own compost that provides iron and so forth. So with the grass that you cut from the lawn, the leaves that you rake up, you can put them in a sack and leave, that, leave them in a sack, let them sweat. And once they sweat, they're gonna give off a scent, yes, but they're gonna rot. And once you find that rot, you can mix that you call that compost, you can mix that with the soil to enrich the soil. That too helps a lot in terms of growth rate of the, the fruit and of the plant that you're doing. It makes it very healthy. But with a limey soil condition, as in terms of a lime soil, certain plants can dwell in it, such as peas, such as mango, such as corn. But other fruits, such as um, tomatoes, peppers, they need that other type of soil. So what we do on property here, and why you would see the property is so lush, not even from the, the hydroponic, but from the landscaping point of view, we create that soil base throughout the property, so it would be rich all over. So things you won't see on other properties, you would see here. Things that you would see in other Caribbean islands with mountains, you would still see here because we create that tropical environment. Years ago, you would look at the property and you said, this is crazy, this cannot happen. But what we do here at Aurora, we make dreams come true and we make things happen. So if you want, if you want to grow to make um, strawberries, trust me, we can make it happen. You just have to get in a cool area and have the right temperature soil and trust me, it will grow. It may not grow as bumptious as those in a um, California where in the evening time the, 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 the temperature is down but 
it will grow and give you sufficient strawberries.